Whoa, it's been so long that uh, my hair grew backwards? And, and the vacuous pocket dimension of nothingness that I was trapped in got replaced with a background? Actually, I, ju I just couldn't afford rent, so I had to move back in with my mom. And I got a haircut. I know. Times, they be a-changin'. So anyway, I was minding my own business when Neil deGrasse Tyson flipped through my feed, and no shade to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I have literally no issue with him. He just happened to be talking about consciousness, and, uh, you know, I'll just show you the clip. So, so... The fact that people keep publishing books on consciousness is the evidence we don't know anything about it, because if we knew all about it, you wouldn't have to keep publishing. <laughs> so, so, what I wonder, what I wonder, Richard, is whether there really is no such thing as consciousness at all, and that there's some other understanding of the functioning of the human brain that renders that question obsolete. And then, my boy, Bill Nye, the science guy, and don't you ever forget it, clapped back with this. To that, I've got to say, like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and am, I, am I, like, thinking? Or am I just, like, thinking that I'm thinking? Like, wow. <laughs> Will you stop? Stop? Right, right, stop. So, anyway, it was a mixed bag for me. I, I don't know, I was not going to do a video on this because I think that Bill's response is the perfect response to someone saying this. And, you know, I majored in psychology, but I'm not going to lie. Neil deGrasse Tyson is both right and wrong. And while Bill's response is perfect and does not need to be changed, amended, or apologized for. I think that the thing that Neil deGrasse Tyson was trying to get across, or at least what I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt he was trying to get across, is something to recognize, you know, in the cognitive, behavioral, social sciences, but also something that any research psychologist or neurologist already knows. And I think that... Neil deGrasse Tyson falls into a particular trap of thinking about consciousness, which is understandable because consciousness is this kind of elusive thing, but interesting to talk about. So anyway, let's just, let's just go through this together. But you can say something about the question which you really would wish to know the answer to. And I mean, for, for me, it would be what, what's consciousness? Oh, because yeah. because that's, that's totally baffling. Not, Richie, you know what I think? I agree. Not that you ask, but what I think on this is uh, consciousness has kind of baffled us for a while. Okay, so for context, the setup of this is that uh, some, uh, some audience member, I think, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I, I went back to make sure that this was, that I found the whole of this particular discussion. But, um, but basically, some, somebody asked, like, this panel of researchers, scientists, mathematicians, uh, what they thought the, the next big thing in science, the next big discovery, the next frontier, etc., was going to be. And essentially, the, the unified answer was, we don't know, that's why we're doing science, which is a reasonable answer. But Richard Dawkins came with the reasonable response of like, okay, well, we could still talk about what we would like to see, like, what thing we would like to see more answers to, and he proposed consciousness. And, yeah, no, I think a lot of people would like to have more answers about the nature of consciousness, but then Neil kind of flips that question and poses an entirely different stream of thought of, like, okay, Dawkins is asking... He is saying that he wants to see more answers about consciousness. And then Neil basically is like, well, we don't have any answers about consciousness, which is kind of not what he was saying. And I don't understand. You're just proving Dawkins' curiosity correct, which didn't need to be validated. My point is, I think Neil wanted to talk about this. Like, this did not need to be said, but he wanted to talk about it. And evidence that we haven't a clue about what consciousness is, is drawn from the, in, from the fact of how many books are published on the topic, right? 
we're not really continuing to publish books, not really, on like Newtonian physics. It's done, all right? So, so the fact that people keep publishing books on consciousness is the evidence we don't know anything about it, because if we knew all about it, you wouldn't have to keep publishing. So. So, Neil is absolutely correct. Consciousness continues to baffle us both in everyday life, as well, if you think about it too hard anyway, as well as the scientific research community that has dedicated itself to studying it. We do, however, have some idea of how it works. Um, we have some pretty good theories, and Neil bringing up books, he's, he mentions books in the sense of like, well, we don't really have published books on Newtonian physics anymore because we've published all the books that we can about Newtonian physics. There's nothing really more to delve into there. But we publish new books about consciousness that are exploring different things all the time, so ergo we don't know anything really about consciousness. Which is, I, I don't know, that's a little bit... Cynical? Uh, I guess, like, the more information people are bringing to the table about a topic means the less we know about it because we haven't figured it all out yet so I, I, I don't understand what the reason for emphasizing this is but I, I guess I I understand w the point he's trying to make but at the same time it's like well it's a bit disingenuous to to just kind of like hand wave all that information that is being presented to you away and also the fact that like I mean there are it's not just books, they're papers detailing experiments which help us to learn more about consciousness and related functions. And like, we don't have a, a singular theory that accounts for everything that we, under, that we observe about consciousness. We have some theories that explain some aspects of consciousness pretty well. You've got the local recurrent processing theory, you've got uh, information integration theory, IIT, you've got the global workshop theory, um, and, and none of these I think perfectly encapsulate what consciousness is, uh, and if you want to learn more about those, I talked about them quite a bit in my uh, last video on split brain research. Uh, if anyone wants to watch that, it appears. Can someone answer me this, by the way? Riddle me this, Batman. Batman. Robin? Anyway, riddle me this. Why did the Sherlock video essay go viral and not this one? Make this one go viral. Please? Anyway, so we have some theories about consciousness that are empirically backed with experiments, observations. It's not just mental philosophy anymore. We, we haven't been relying on that for the last hundred years. But anyway, like, I don't know, I'm kind of losing the thread. What does he say next? What I wonder, <laughs> what I wonder, Richard, is whether there really is no such thing as consciousness at all. And that there's some other understanding of the functioning of the human brain that renders that question obsolete. So, because we don't know everything about consciousness and we're continuously publishing books about it, and regardless of the fact that the cognitive revolution only happened 70 years ago, give or take, uh, we don't know everything about it, and therefore, perhaps, there is no such thing as consciousness at all. That's the line of argumentation here, which we're going to get into in a second, why I don't think where I think the argument may have went awry. Richard! <laughs> we went, we went decades, we went decades not understanding the procession of Mercury. It was this big mystery, and we invented solutions to it, like a mysterious planet Vulcan tugging on it such that the, its, per, its perihelion processed. And, and that wasn't the explanation at all. It was uh, obviously general relativity, another thing not the original question <laughs> we were asking. So you say you want to know what consciousness is, maybe that's not even the right question. Okay, Neil, I think I find your problem. It, you, threw, you threw a wrench into an otherwise reasonable yet unnecessary point. <laughs> um, consciousness is not an explanation for something like Vulcan 
being the explanation for the precession of Mercury or general relativity being the explanation for the precession of Mercury. Consciousness in this analogy, in this metaphor, is the precession of Mercury because ultimately consciousness boiled down to like what we understand about it is that it is the subjective experience of being alive which we are all having including you right now and that's just a matter of fact like consciousness is not an explanation to anything in this discussion it is a thing we are trying to explain because we have observed its existence and that is within the purview of scientific research which is why we have neuroscientists and psychologists and and anthropologists and sociologists and and all these different fields that interdisciplinarily connected back all the way in the 50s to start the cognitive revolution um like we've been we haven't been researching it that long in comparison to the natural sciences like the social sciences are pretty recent that's why that's probably why we don't have the definitive answer about these things but the point is that consciousness is not the explanation it is the thing that we have observed that needs to be explained and here's the thing i'm a level with you I do not understand the first thing about the procession of Mercury. This is, in fact, the first time hearing about it. I am not a physics person. My understanding of physics ended in high school and I guess was carried on by Kurtzkestadt and Hank Green and I forget her name, but this, this channel. Go check her out, she's awesome. Like, my interest in physics is casual. I, it's not a field of study that I was interested in pursuing i liked chemistry i liked biology but not enough like i was interested in psychology philosophy art um like i like the social sciences and the humanities that's just what i wanted to do so I, if there was anyone who would explain to me something like the procession of mercury it's neil degrasse tyson or bill nye but like i'm not going to pitch a fight about things that I haven't explored, that I haven't dedicated myself to understanding. And I think this is just one of those those areas, perhaps. I don't know if Neil does any research into psychology or neuroscience or reads any papers published in those those journals, but like I mean like kinda sounds like you're 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 misunderstanding the point of that research if you think that consciousness is is not a thing that that possibly is not a thing that exists i don't know maybe this is maybe history has no lessons maybe maybe sometimes just things happen if i were to pull a lesson from this it would be maybe we should not talk about things that we haven't taken the time to understand as much as we do I mean, we can all we can all like fuck around, like we can all fuck around, and find out, and talk about things that we don't know about. Like that's fine, but like, I don't know. Some, sometimes, sometimes it's best that we not, or at least we not do it regularly. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. History has no lessons. I think that's the lesson from history. <sighs> that's a horrible lesson to take from history. I don't know. That was my. That's my two cents. That's it. Um, I'm trying these shorter videos in between longer video essays. Don't worry, more video essays like this one, please go watch, uh, are coming. Uh, so we'll see if you guys enjoy this shorter, kind of like chiller thing that I don't have to spend three months doing research and writing for. Um, I am excited for the next big video essay though, so stay tuned. For that, in the meantime, if you have already learned about split brains, perhaps you would be interested in learning about Clever Hans, the horse that tricked everyone into thinking he can do math by reading body language. True story. If that isn't enough of a hook, and clearly it probably wasn't, but nobody wanted to learn about Clever Hans. Poor Clever Hans, man. Anyway, Patreon down there. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you fuckers later.